Mans is ugly as hell. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of The Great Ace Attorney Adventures. So last time we were really uh, hammering away at Graydon's crappy testimony. And he has a connection to McGilded, this disc, and leaking government secrets. Yeah, this man is a traitor. He's or so at least bad. allegedly. He most definitely is, though. Mm hmm. But yeah, we're just going to continue along and hopefully wrap up this trial very soon. So, let's hop in. Graydon's counter. A mere communications officer can possibly steal confidential government information. Are Besides, the sounds produced by that music box aren't even Morse code. It was some low crap. Crass. Low class brickmaker negotiating with Big Gilded anyway, was it not? I have no relation to the man. Look, all we done is break into the gaff the other night, like we done he told us to. Yeah, if we, we know there was dodgy government secrets involved, we wouldn't have touched it. It's kind of funny seeing the man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You're like, grr. What the hell? Oh, what's the matter? Uh, crying on? Uh, Mr. Mr. Skulkin. What Mr. do, Governor? What's up? Do I take it that you now admit to the crime? That on the night in question, you did indeed gain entry to the premises illegally. And moreover, you did so as a party of three in collaboration with Mr. Grainier. Oh. <laughs> we did, Gov, we did. Okay. Look at all that coats. Quieten down, please. What say you to that, Mr. Grain? I have no idea what these two ruffians are referring to. And Jay has no idea what they're talking about either. No. <laughs> <laughs> you little rot again that's mixed up in all this monkey business. You never seen nothing about no government secrets. It was supposed to be a straight up job. And what about the geyser shop he was, eh? Poor bloke didn't have to die, did he? <laughs> they're just flat out saying <laughs> that he killed him. Nice to know who your friends are. Your friends are. <laughs> Whatever these men say, I deny the accusations. Sure you do. <laughs> I don't know, I believe them. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Sounds pretty truthful to me. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this little music box to become so significant to the proceedings. However, as it has, I will admit it to the court record as evidence. Here we go. A small box. A small. A small written. A small. <laughs> A small. Hold it! Let's do this. No, you hold it, Buster. <laughs> so this is the newspaper headline. Wait, no, is this accurate? Government communications are being intercepted? How could I possibly know? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Any important government communications are handled by high-level officers, by specialists. You probably don't even know what one is. General members of staff in the station where I work would never be entrusted with sensitive information. Oh, uh, this is the... Oh, British that is, lady. yeah, that's her. Oh no, stop. Must say something. Stop. What? I'm not gonna oh, lie, yes. I feel like if I ran into Graydon on the street, I would just purposely say shit in front of him to piss him off because, like, <laughs> he doesn't look like he could actually fight me. No, <laughs> if that makes not. sense. Like, he looks like you could just make fun of him. Until and he like, pulls out a gun. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> be like, oh, Turn my, number five. my nerve. <laughs> oh. My fingers We slipped. regularly communicate. Oh, wait. We regular communication station officers aren't as lonely as you're being led to believe. <laughs> aren't as lonely. Oh, is that what it said? Oh, or did it say lowly? And I read it as lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you read it. I heard lonely. A team of us are responsible for setting up and testing the telegraphs used by the ministry. And Mr. Grayson is the team leader. Mr. Grayson? Graydon, fuck. That's fascinating. Mr. Dick Grayson. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Wait, is there supposed to be an A there? Oh, what? <laughs> Why'd you skip? I wasn't done. <laughs> I was looking at the fact that I feel like there should have been an A there. Oh, Graydon, Graydon is, is highly skilled, highly operator, skilled stop. operator. Stop. Currently, oh, I think she's a vital. Uh, stop. I think that's on purpose. She's like deliberately speaking in incomplete sentences. Oh, Currently Graydon in the presence is highly of idol. skilled stop. operator. Currently in presence of idol. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So you had access to the equipment used for these confidential communications, Mr. Graydon. Well, what of it? The transmissions are always made behind closed doors so they can't be heard. And in any case, all messages are sent in ciphered. Normal employees can possibly understand them. 
No, no, stop. Must say something to stop. Stop talking. <laughs> I won't be doing that. Mr. Graydon regularly attends meetings with ministry technicians and the ministry communications team. He assists them in ensuring that there are no errors in important international communications. Wow, she is selling him out. Just like she the two really is. And he's received the top prize at the Cypher Cracking Convention five years wow. in a row now. Good <laughs> fucking lord. Brutally... You are, yeah, you're going to jail, bro. Wow. Like, <laughs> That's fascinating. It is Thank fascinating. You. Thanks. Can he's you like, stop? why would you say that? <laughs> he's like, what are you That's going to so tell funny. them next that I've been in and out of jail five to ten times? <laughs> he's just an international spy. Stop. <laughs> stop. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idol. Stop. Well, your idol would appreciate it if you keep your mouth shut. If you'd shut the fuck up. <laughs> she should really pick her idols more carefully. That's so funny. Uh, I tell you, this lawyer's accusations are completely unfounded. You sure about that? Yes. Are you sure about that? Jay. Are you sure? Hold it. They're not? To anyone with a brain, that would be blatantly apparent on listening to that music box for even a few seconds. <laughs> what did you say? Of course, of course. Oh my god. <laughs> Surely you can't be that my learned friend is not familiar with Morse code. To be fair, I'm not really familiar with it either. Me neither. I just know dots and Ouch. dashes. <laughs> he looks genuinely shocked at my ignorance. Ha ha ha. Who? Ha ha ha. A bug just the flew up my nose. Show bad nowhere. <laughs> I love that line from That's Pokemon Emerald. so good, yeah. I would be more than happy to demonstrate the basics for you, sir. S-O-S. -S. A, a lesson here in court? You got the sauce. Morse code is a continuous series of two distinct tones. Tones, you say? Yes, a short dot and a long dash. By combining those in different ways, you construct letters. I see. For example, this is A. Oh, that's cool. And this is B. Interesting. But when you listen to the sound produced by this music box, you only hear one tone, don't you? But, but it sounds so similar. The rhythm of it is the same in everything. But there's no discernible meaning to this apparently random sequence of sounds. Okay, so maybe it's not Morse code. Maybe it's like a different method of communication. So your assertion is fundamentally flawed. This is not Morse code. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> uh -oh. Really, you shouldn't be so surprised. What did I tell you? That music box is nothing but a worthless piece of scrap. Perhaps you might consider studying your subject matter before casting aspersions in the future. <sighs> stop. Nothing to say but stop. Oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, I want to punch him. I want to pop up a <laughs> <laughs> That's so fired out, just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if the government secrets were somehow being leaked using the music box, so many other things would slot into place so nicely. And other things would slip into my ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could there still be something I haven't considered? Would it really be impossible to use this music box somehow to play back Morse code? Impossible. <laughs> There's still every possibility that this music box was instrumental in leaking of government balls. That's the belief of the defense, at least. Objection! What you said made no sense. Does it please you in some way, my Nepalese friend, to repeat the same line of argument ad infinitum? It's already been established that to be Morse code, two tones are required. Dots and dashes. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Then what? Well, uh, it would appear the defense has a hypothesis to put forward. <gasps> Stop. <laughs> you had better present your idea at once, counsel. How do you propose that this music box, which appears to produce only a single tone, could have been used as a cipher secret messages to Morse code? Oh, shit. Maybe it has to do with the dots. Yeah, absolutely. See how the form of gilded disc sits in the music box the man deposited when... What? Yeah. It could be a more perfect <laughs> <What>? fit. <laughs> So there's no question, then, the disc was designed to be played in this music box. Yet despite that, the sounds it produces are neither musical nor do they appear to have any meaning. 
It just doesn't make any sense. I wonder... If perhaps there's more to this music box than meets the eye. Maybe we haven't discovered all its secrets yet. But what? But what could it be? I thought that was like a button, but... I guess it's not. I think it's just a little gemstone. What is that thing? Uh, okay, so there was a button. Oh. What is it, Reno? I, I've just noticed something about this music box. Looks like the bottom of it opens up as well. Huh, you're right! Well, come on then, what are you waiting for? Let's open it. Got it. Slams the box on the <laughs> Oh no. All right then, here goes. Uh... Wow. Look at that! There's another movement on the underside. So, does that mean? You could send another disc to play back on this side. Wicked. Yes, I oh, think so. Shit. And it looks like the two movements are linked together. They're linked. So if you had two discs, they would play... Oh wait, both play at the back. <laughs> oh, back at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Interesting. Good gracious, what am I looking at here? Another movement on the other side of the music box. What? No. <laughs> He's like, stop. It appears, my lord, that the two movements are linked together. In other words, you can put two discs in this music box, and the sounds of both will play back at the same time. Good heavens! As the chord is heard, Morse code comprises of two tones, a short dot and a long dash. With the second disc in place, the music box can be used to generate Morse code and convey a message. You mad? <laughs> oh, yes. This is beyond a joke. You mad? I'm sorry. This poor excuse for a lawyer has absolutely no evidence to support his claims. He just kept saying, you, I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm sorry? What are you? I can't hear you, what? <laughs> Though, of course, if my learned friend were able to present the court with a second disc, that would be another matter. Well, let me just pull one out of my ass real quick. I can't at the Honestly, moment. Honestly, I would expect him to fully do that <laughs> because it's an Ace Attorney game or someone's <laughs> going to bust through the door and be like, I have the disc or one of the fucking <laughs> brothers. Shoot. One of the brothers. Oh, oh yeah. that would be so iconic. One of the brothers is going to be like, oh, I found this weird circle thing on the ground. I picked it up because I didn't think I would need it. But yeah, so. <laughs> I just have it. Oh, I just have it now. And may I remind the court that as the witness has pointed out. He was not the one in the omnibus from the Gilded two months ago, striking a deal over the disc or discs. Alright, who has the disc? Indeed. <clears throat> that was Mr. Mason, the bricklayer. Exactly! I had nothing whatsoever to do with it! Shut the hell up. We're not talking to you. <clears throat> who has the disc? Okay, I guess Bring us is. the disc. The joke's <laughs> not funny anymore. Where's the disc? <laughs> Though it has holes, I must admit the argument presented by the defense has much promise. I believe the cross-examination shall continue. The link between Graydon and the victim of the Omnibus case must be there somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. Oh dear, it looks like you need to give your- wait, fuck, your argument more strength, Runa. Damn, you will reiterate your testimony if you please, Mr. Raiden. If I must, though I maintain exactly what I did at the start of this pointless cross-examination. <laughs> you are stupid, and <clears throat> I don't like you. Hold it! <laughs> <laughs> So two months ago in that omnibus, McGilda killed the brickmaker and stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. It seems he lived in an artisan quarter some years ago, but people there remember little about him. That doesn't make much sense though, does it? How would a humble brickmaker come to acquire secret government information? How indeed? Ew, Why your that face smirk is off your fucking face? ugly. That's literally the ugliest sprite I've ever seen him make. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> it's so cool. There must have be, been somebody else involved fucking behind the scenes of all this. <clears throat> somebody who acquired the disc and gave it to Mr. Mason. I'm starting to lose my voice slightly. <laughs> In order to take it to the meeting with the Gilda and negotiate a deal. I know we're recording right now, but I'm about to send you a snapshot of exactly what his smirk looks like in real life because I have a thought in my brain and I've seen people do this before and I need to send it to you so you know what I'm talking about. Oh no. Alright, I'm gonna take Dear me. You may have it in for me, sir, but I assure you, I have far more class than that. You still look ugly. An old brickmaker from an artisan quarter and this well-to-do communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link the two of them together. 
check your Snapchat. <laughs> I want you to see my green impression. Face. <laughs> green be like, yeah. That's <laughs> it's literally that. That's literally what it looks like. <laughs> if you have nothing more to add on that note, let us return to the witness testimony. God, I hate this. Look, all we done is break into the gaff the other night, like we told us to. Shit. <laughs> That's not what you said. <laughs> I like how Inspector Gregson's just sitting there. Has it done anything. I know, he's like, can I leave? <laughs> <laughs> like Mr. Green told you to do, you mean? That's it, yeah. Who else, eh? Sid and me thought it was just popping over from a nano after all them years, but Rhoda had the dodgy job for us. What did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ash. He calls him Ash. <laughs> Andy, I genuinely 100% like you. You started speaking, you didn't stutter at all, and I think that's what made me understand you less. I Hell was like, yeah. "Whoa!" <laughs> Let me stop you there, Mister Skulkin. After all them years, you say. After Do all you them mean years. to tell me that Mister Brayden is an acquaintance of yours? How did you mess yeah. up that one? But you. <laughs> <laughs> But a sociable kind of baddies, you know? Sure, let's say Graydon's in old China. Yeah, huh? China. <laughs> he looks so polite. Is something wrong, Mr. Skulkin? I'm thinking about apples. Yeah, yeah. No, the other Mr. Skulkin. I've noticed, like, my voice, it's harder to do when I'm doing Ryunosuke's voice. It's weird. That's so weird. What, who, me? When your brother was testifying just now, he said something that seemed to cause you to react. I was just remembering the old days, that's all. We used to have a right old laugh together way back when. Together? With Mr. Green, you mean? Isn't Re isn't Ryunosuke's voice just your voice? No, I, I do it slightly higher. Well, when you read his lines, do you just, like, articulate your words differently and that's why you stumble over them? Like, when like okay, like, the difference between going, like, yeah, with Ash versus me going, like, <laughs> yeah, with Ash. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess. He's like more, like I make him purposely more soft-spoken. He's like my hero voice, but toned down a little bit. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. Hey, we're bash. I mean, look at him now, his fancy whistle of flute. And you wouldn't have him, what am I saying? <laughs> when he was younger, he was from the poor part of town, just like us. Oh, so he was. He grew up in that part of town with them. Interesting. And the now he's The people that he big. doesn't like. <clears throat> Is the that The people so? that he doesn't like to rub elbows with now. Boy, he was always a leery one. He had the brains, he had the savvy. Always coming up with smart ideas like what would never have gone through our heads. Go blimey, ain't that the truth? Remember me attending Skullkid's milk run? <laughs> there so was a cork, funny. eh? Please tell us about that. Save it until after the trial. No. The reminiscing is no place in this courtroom. I want to hear about the milk. <laughs> <laughs> and neither does your fruit. Oi, the geese asked us a question, didn't he? And what we was answering. Yeah, we ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah, you tell needed him. a prop. <laughs> Nevertheless, the court is not prepared to accompany you on your own trip down memory lane. Counsel, can we turn our attention back to the testimony, please? I don't know. Could that sentimental story be relevant? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's bringing Graydon back to his roots. My lord. Yes, counsel. The brother's last sentimental statement could hold vital information relating to the fucking case. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I will, He's counsel. Like, you don't need to swear at me. <laughs> I'll admit the brothers supplement their own testimony without detail. Briefly, I hasten to add. Yeah. I love that. Say no more. Skulkin's never skulkin. Skulkin's never skulkin. Milverton is. Milverton is skulkin's milk run. Gold over the days. I'm sure I'm going to regret asking, but. What exactly was that? Some kind of business? Just a little scheme we had going back when we was youngsters. A bit of fun, really. To deliver fresh milk to the locals. That's what it was all about. Then we kill them. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds That's alarmingly legitimate. There must be a catch. We rob them. That's also a crime. I suppose since we're here, I should ask them to elaborate. But on what? Business name. What were you called? So this business was just a bit of fun, you say? And it was just yourselves and Mr. Green involved. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Milverton and Skulkin's milk run, was it? You're free yeah, to Yeah, that's it. <laughs> or wait, not rejuvenated. Re... What is it? Rejuvenated is when you're, like, after, you're, like, a run or something. Or after exercise, you, like... Oh, re... No. Replenish? Yeah. 
I was I was about to say replenish, but replenish is more of a synonym for rejuvenate. What does it mean when you're, you're when you eat your apple and then it fucking like heals? <laughs> now you have a new apple. What'd you call that? Reformed? <laughs> well, I don't know. Re Respond? I think, I think replenish Respond? <laughs> yeah, replenish. I think replenish would still work. I think so. Replenishes itself. Definitely. Ever. Not anyway. <laughs> Where did the Milverton part come from? Oh, right. I, I thought at 11 o'clock, like, he would have worked out that one out. That easy. Hold it. Hold it. Enough of this. Oh, uh, what are you going to say? You can't say my Shut real up. name or something. Shut or, up. Wait a... So yeah, I'm assuming can't... Milverton has to do with him. Yeah, I'm going to assume that. Oh, you can't say this... my real, actual, legal fucking name yeah. in court for a crime I was gonna say, that I'm this being accused of. Bozo really did three name changes in this one court case. Yeah, literally. You're not fooling anyone. Your vest is mm, stupid, yeah. and I hate you. <laughs> How much longer are we expected to listen to this drivel? I don't... Shut the fuck up. He's like, you cut me off? Let me guess. You don't accept anything these two witnesses are saying? It's almost like we can sentences. tell. It's almost like we fucking know that you don't like them. <laughs> tell me, why was it only the, in the mention of the name Milverton that you decided to interject? Because I... Well... <laughs> hey, what the happy is the times that one came from? Yeah, his old man was struggling for money so much his wife walked down on him. Oh! <laughs> she took the name Graydon then, see? Lamau! But I shall always be Milverton us. That's so funny. Milverton? Uh, Maidenless so Milverton, used to be your huh? Surname. Did it? Hold on. Do we have. That's what that's what hit me. Mason Milverton. That just popped into my head. Interesting. So you stole his identity? No, I think he's or he faked his, his old name. man walked out, the old or his wife left his dad. I wonder if Mason Milverton's his dad. Oh shit! Really? Because he came from a poor background. Oh fuck! He and killed his dad. Last thing or I remember, what? like I doubt brickmakers made that much money back then. So I think that's what he's referring to. Wait. I don't remember though. It's been a long time since I played this case. Wait, and we didn't but... find out who caused the fire, right? No, we still have no idea. I wonder, did he kill his fucking dad? <laughs> or rather, well, he was he... dead before. Oh, no, Mc... yeah. McGilded, McGilded killed yeah, McGilded Milverton. Killed... Yeah. So I would assume that Graydon's the one who set the fire then. To and hide also the shot evidence. Windbank. Oh, Damn, because so you know two, what? Two no, 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 no. Because that would actually be a really good point. Because what better way to erase your family name at a time like this, where it's like they don't really have, like, you know, the government doesn't really have this shit on file everywhere, I don't think. So, like, what better way to, like, kind of, like, erase your past than, I guess, to, like, <clears throat> if your dad's already dead, fucking destroy your dad? Which, I guess, is a little extreme, but, like, you know. Yeah, and get back in McGilded, too. Yeah. Damn. Because I'm assuming McGilded probably has dirt on him or something, or maybe he took out a loan from him. Oh my god! Because so I know, because I know, thrice fired Mason he took out a loan. Mhm. Mm so, and I'm assuming if he was with, associated with that, you know, he right, then you was could trace borrowing it back to... from McGilded. Yeah. So, McGilded probably. When? Uh, well, damn. Okay, I'm starting. To, I'm starting to come up with too many theories. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> so that used to be your surname, did it? <laughs> of course not. This is all bunkum. I've been a grandin since I was born. Do you really think you can rely on the testimony of these two thieves, hmm? Yeah, actually. <laughs> your communications officer are attached to the civil service. As such, your personal details will have been thoroughly checked at the time of your appointment. It would be a very simple matter indeed to subpoena those records, Mr. Graydon. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's hilarious. It would appear that Mr. and Mr. Skolkin's testimony be reliable, for once. You were born Ashley Milverton, then. Is that correct? God, that was painful because I know that he's related to Thrice Fired Mason now. Right? So now we have to wait for the game I to know, progress until they're like, yeah, wow, let's put two three together. Very well, yes. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things and could turn out to be extremely important. Yes. I hate it here. All right, so now, all of a sudden, we seem to make our, be up to our necks in a serious matter of national security. 
Although all this talk about interception of secret government messages is still just conjecture at this stage. It would explain a number of things, though, wouldn't it? The negotiation Jimmy overheard on the omnibus two months ago and the break-in at Windybanks. But the trouble is, it wasn't Mr. Grayson in the om fucking balls, Mr. Graydon in the omnibus with Mr. McGill did. No, that was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker who was so horribly murdered. The brick. <laughs> the, he was killed the brick. <laughs> he was bricked. Hmm. If only there was some link between the two men somehow. Hmm, they're literally shoving in our face. It's almost I like know. maybe they're related. <laughs> Mr. Graydon's testimony seems to be as watertight as ever. It's not. Why are we still calling him Mr. Graydon? I wonder if the key to us making headway is across examination here. <laughs> Stop calling Could that. be those two brothers. We just did that. They already told us what we needed to know. It was some low-class brickmaker who negotiated with the Gilded. I have no relation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny you say that. Put that away. Hmm, Mr. Ashley Milverton. Tell me, why did you try to hide your former name from the court? Because I haven't gone by that name for years. It means nothing to me. No, I don't think that's the real explanation at all. The truth is, you had a reason to hide that name. <laughs> Explain yourself, please, Gautel. I have here the notes from the Omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who we now understand to have been negotiating with McGilded. Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. That's right. Only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name was Mason Milverton. Wow. Mil Milverton. <laughs> Do you mean to say, say it's alive? Mr. Ashley Milverton, is it not the case that the brickmaker, Mr. Mason Milverton, was your father? Ugh. I don't. As I believe I mentioned earlier, your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you join the civil service. And it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. Ugh. The truth is, you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential government information and selling it to McGilded in collaboration with your father. Damn. Okay, now things are starting to make sense. Ugh. Okay, what's the twirl really necessary? <laughs> it's so dramatic. The new facts and evidence unveiled by the cross-examination of this witness all come together to reveal the truth. The truth, you say? That you collaborated with your father, Mr. Mason Milverton, in illegal dealings with Magnus McGilded. Why well, died to this music box, you mean, Council? Your died or dent? I don't know. Yes, don't know. stealing information being sent in government, secret government communications and selling it on to McGilded. Wow, this guy sucks. I know. Mr. Graydon con concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music box discs to encode the information. That's smart, though. I will give oh, him that. As presumably a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. <laughs> Which it did. <laughs> a very effective one. I shouldn't have been given this scheme any credence whatsoever. But the deal with the gilded went sour, and the brickmaker met his end. Yes, but before he was arrested, the gilded managed to temporarily dispose of the stolen disc at the pawnbroker. Then, having learned of the situation, you appeared in Mr. Windebags two days ago, in an attempt to recover the two articles the gilded had placed in pawn there. Stop, please. <laughs> I'm just a baby. Shut up. That attempt failed. One of the discs seized by the police, and the other you never found. So that same night, you enlisted the help of the Skulkin brothers and broke into the pawnbroker. This time, determined to recover the second disc. Are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music box? <laughs> Wait, we never knew nothing about that. On the night that Mr. Windebank was killed. This is so layered. <laughs> oh yeah. The intruder in the pawnbroker touched on one item and one item, one item alone, the music box. It's also like I knew <laughs> case three was gonna box. come back around, but now everything adds up. Mm -hmm. It's rather ingeniously just demonstrated by the two prints from the security camera. 
Indeed. God damn it. My AirPods died again. No. So, the question that naturally begs answering is this. Why was only that one article dis disturbed? The answer is obvious, because it contained the second disc, which the intruder was desperate to retrieve. Since, if it were to fall into the hands of the police, it would be proof of high treason. No! Well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny that all of this actually began on that fateful night two months ago? What do you say? I... I... I refuse to accept any of this nonsense! Hey, your arm's mm. bleeding a little bit there. Mm. Well, yeah, no. you're bleeding a little. <laughs> That's actually really great attention to detail, though. Oh, definitely. On the dev's part. Sir? There appears to be blood seeping through the sleeve of your jacket. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? That's ketchup. <laughs> Two nights ago, we know that three shots were fired at the scene of the crime in Windbank's pawn burglary. Oh, one took the life of the pawn burger himself. One struck the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. God, seeing uh, Susata there, it feels so weird because it, it's been a while since we've seen her. It has, yeah. I mean, technically, it really hasn't, but it's been a good, like, six episodes. And the final bullet hit the alien. Struck the calendar on the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arm of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon. That wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide. It's a bullet wound, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. He's got you now, me old China. <laughs> Time to call it quits a croak, I reckon. I love that they're just like totally at this point like, yeah, you're fucked, Graydon. Uh, if <laughs> take you go to fall, jail, oh well. <laughs> yeah, just basically. Don't acknowledge my presence there under any circumstances whatsoever. Those were my terms, remember? And I paid you handsomely to comply. You're saying this <laughs> out loud? And now we don't care. <laughs> Clearly, I was a fool to think I could trust some common backslum thieves. What do they owe you? Like, you treat them all like shit. You're paying mm. them off. Like, what do they you, owe you? You act like you're I would take the money and run, too. <laughs> Fine. I admit it. I was there in Winterbanks that night. I paid this pair ten guineas to accompany me. And as you've noticed, I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. And it's so fucking who? Feel sorry for someone who cares! But that is all, I admit to nothing more. Still the government secrets? Negotiating with Mr. McGilded? As God is my witness, I'm sure I recall nothing of the sort. He's not going to go down without a fight. Not until I can show how hard evidence, I suppose. Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is, have you been paying attention? <laughs> well, we know the bullet was fired from each of the two firearms we have in evidence. The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers gun hit the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the bullet from Mr. Windbank's gun. Clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Rain on the arm. Indeed, it must. We can rule out the possibility that the man shot himself. I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> and that leads us to only one conclusion. Mr. Windebank was shot by a third gun. My gun. Which can only have been fired by the third intruder. Goodness. Ugh. That's right, Mr. Graydon. <laughs> the only person who could have possibly shot Mr. Windebank that night is you. Got him. Got him. <laughs> what? How are you gonna hold this? Breakdown time. Wait. Oh, shit. <laughs> you little upstart. You made a grave mistake when you summoned me here. Are you threatening me? What? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, as you rightly say, I was there at the pawnbrokers. I did my best to hide that fact, naturally. I had no intention of ruining the distinguished career I'd built for myself at the communication station. 
But did the thought never cross your mind? Did you never consider the possibility? What do you mean? What thought? What possibility? The possibility that if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed the crucial moment. You see... This makes me a key witness in this case, and I have my hands firmly around the neck of your client. What? You're really gonna use Gina against us, wow. I know. What are you suggesting? I saw it all! I saw the very moment that pickpocket girl pointed the gun at that poor defenseless pawnbroker and oh, shot him! God, shut up! Did you- What?! He's obviously lying! But they'll believe anything. <laughs> order, order! Well... It would seem we are finally entering the last act of this theatrical trial. Mr. Graydon. Yes? I trust you are fully aware of the implications here. If it is shown that your claim is false, you will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Oh, I understand fully. And you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> then I must give you, ask you to give your formal testimony once more. You will explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment you de the defendant allegedly shot the victim. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I'm totally going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm destined to win this trial. Oh boy, the moment of the shooting. While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance to the shop. When the bank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shot himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole in the door, though. The accused in a black coat shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole. So I picked it up and made my escape. So you took the gun I feel like you? there's already so- yeah, like, what? <laughs> Good gracious, this is quite extraordinary testimony. I did it. <laughs> I'm gonna rip your lips off. You claim, sir, under oath, you have clearly seen the defendant pulling the trigger. Y you're you lying. You didn't! This dude is deep- I mean, I understand, like, I know he doesn't want to incriminate himself for a freaking murder and also incriminate himself for- Leaking government secrets because that's even worse. <laughs> yeah, for literally like federal offense. <laughs> yeah. Order, order. But man, this dude is going all in. It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. Yeah, clearly. But neither is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder I didn't commit. <laughs> okay. Oh, whatever. So you see, my hand has been forced. I tell the truth now as an act of self preservation. Shut the fuck up. You tell a lie for self preservation. I'm using the you guilty dick. scheme. <laughs> The truth. Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. Eh. Uh, yes, well, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, nice so now you speak. speak. Up. Having shot me in the arm, the pump broker was then shot in the back by the accused. And, as I said, she was showered in his blood. Why would she shoot him if she shot you? That's what I mean. Also, did she really actually have blood all over her? Because I thought that that wasn't true. She had blood on her sleeves, I remember. Yeah. So I'm I like, don't I don't know if I'm reading too much into that, but like, I don't think she was splattered Wait, no. with it. No, she think, was splattered because you know? uh, Iris used Sholmes' little thing. Like you, you shoot him and then the blood splatter shows up in different colors. Oh, She yeah. shot that on Gina. I think. Okay. For some reason, I thought that, that that blood splatter, though, when they used that to show it, wasn't a lot. No. Uh, but I guess I'm remembering it wrong. Hmm. You say the blood is splattered over the accused's coat. Are you sure on that point? Oh, yes. Quite sure. All over the black overcoat that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Really? Hmm. If our coat would come somehow show to harbor vestiges of blood, that would be conclusive evidence here. Oh, well, there's definitely a little bit on there, which so we may be fucked. Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. What? Only very recently, a German scientist developed a technique to identify human blood. Are you kidding me? 
So here's to true science, not some amateurish detective's dubious foray to the world of chemistry. There's nothing dubious about Helly's work. His ideas are all sound. Shut up. Ideas of our new use to us here. In science, as in law, theories must be proven before they stand. <laughs> get, get wrecked. In <laughs> Germany, the technique has already been employed into courtroom as basis of evidence. Scotland Yard is a small quantity of the chemical reagent used, with your lordship's permission. We could shatter all vestiges of talent within minutes. Hmm, I like that. This doesn't look good, Runa. Yeah, we're in danger. Oh, why not? Yeah. What do you mean, why not? Well, we know, don't we? That there's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat. I guess there is a ton of blood on Ginny's coat. If they test it with their chemicals... Oh, help! You're right! I was forgetting what happened yesterday. <laughs> oh, help! Oh, help! We could just drink the reagent. <laughs> Bam. Susato. Don't move, Ginny. I'm going to shoot. Tomato. Tomato. We miss you. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. It was a, a decent amount. Yeah, okay. That is definitely a splatter. Oops. <laughs> um, Oops. Yeah, we're fucked. But that is not Mr. Windermake's blood. That stain is from two months ago. Yeah. And of course, I'm going to oh! spin it. That's Mr. Mason's blood from when he was stabbed by Nick Gilded, who was wearing the coat at the time. But see, now if we can identify the type of blood it is, we can definitely go, that's not that's not the correct blood. Yeah, And which... then it just opens a can of, can of worms. Yeah, glad Ryunosuke is objecting now. My lord, the defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. Overruled. What? Oh my god. Prove to me that it was from uh, Windebank then. If you do this test. Right? Lord Von Zeeks, make it so at once. Like, it was clearly from Mr. Mason. With pleasure, my lord. And then you have freaking uh, Ashley Milverton over there celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> and while we wait the results, uh, what? The results? The defense may proceed with the cross examination. Proceed. Once they find blood on that overcoat, Gina will be. Council. Yes, my lord. Your cross-examination. Of course, my lord. If this cross-examination doesn't go well, if I don't manage to uncover some decisive evidence or a really compelling clue now, I have a very bad feeling about the outcome of this trial. We die. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, boy. Hold it! Mr. Windebank emerged from the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouring the encounter when he suddenly appeared and flew with them. He already had the revolver in his hand. Fortunately, I wasn't too close. I've never been so scared in all my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just your regular mild man of burglars, that's all. We don't like violence. Says the pair who carry a gun. What do you mean when you say you weren't near the entrance to the shop? I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves and forfeited items. Looking for the music box, of course. The broker went for Nash in the first place. Then Ringo joined in, making it two against one, so I assumed they could handle the situation. But I was wrong. Well, I was trying to help me, little bro, but the old geezer dropped me over the blooming counter. So I pulled a gun on the old fella, and I soon made him scarper. The pair of you setting upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker were together. Shame on you! Sorry, Gov. Hold it! You mean that's the moment you were shot? Yes. Though I didn't immediately realize what had happened, of course. Things crashed to the floor from the counter as the three men were brawling. It was exactly that moment that it happened, so I didn't hear the gunshot. Then the bullet went on to strike the calendar in the wall behind you. So it would appear. When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding badly. So I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what had happened to a doctor, I had no choice but to wait for it to heal. I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. I mean, it's a gun wound, <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> Did Mr. Winnebeck intend to shoot you, do you think? I would. Well, now, I didn't imagine <laughs> he even noticed that I was there, to be honest. Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyway, it didn't quite strike home. 
When I pulled the gun on him, he tried to shove me out the way. And then he scarped through that door at back. At which point, what did you do? Well, I shot him. Hold it! <laughs> you mean, you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. And what about this peephole in the door you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom door is a solid job, made of stout wood. But, uh, there's a small opening at about head height that lets you see what's in there from the outside. Actually, I should know that, shouldn't I? I looked through it myself that night. You did. Hello. <laughs> oh. And what about you burly brothers? Did you see what went on through this people as well? You know, like the gov, don't say enough of those orcov. I doubt these two buffoons were even aware of the people's existence. So the Skorkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Windebank take place. Hmm. Inside the storeroom, I can see the broker and that young girl standing there. The defendant? Yes, though neither of them noticed that I was looking. The girl raised her gun and pointed it straight at the man. I'm lying, by the way. You really are. <laughs> and then what did you see next? Hold it! Yes, when the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with the gun in her hand. But that was Mr. Windebank's gun, from which only a single bullet had been fired. And as we've already established, Mr. Graydon, that bullet was fired at you. No. Ah, but no. It wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had when I saw her. Yes, the bullet from Windebeck's gun grazed my arm. And yes, the Skulkin's gun grounded the detective. But this was another gun entirely. A third gun. You're so full of fucking <laughs> shit, my guy. The broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so clearly there took be a been a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused must have had her own gun with her at the time. Can you prove that? Objection. No! And also, why would she have a gun? Yeah, but no other gun was found at the scene. <laughs> Calm yourself, counsel. Do not talk to me, first of all. Sorry? You must consider the events in order. <sighs> at first, I saw the broker and the girl glaring at each other, but then, all of a sudden, the broker turned to run. And it was at that moment that the little gutter rat shot him in the back. A chilling image, I must say. Yeah, pretty chilling. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Hold it! All, all over her. Yes, through the people I saw her clearly. No, that's McGill. That's Mr. Mason's blood. <laughs> oh my God. Of course, the stains aren't visible now. What with the coat being such a dark color. But I assure you, that garment is sullied with the victim's blood. Well, it is sullied with blood. That's for sure. Was there, like, a portion of this game in which we were discussing that Ginny doesn't own a gun, or that Ginny, or not Ginny, oh yeah, Ginny, <laughs> doesn't own a gun, or, like, owns a knife, or some shit, or am I just, like, I don't think so. I don't know, I don't know why am I... Actually, no, I think we were, we argued that the, she got the gun that was on the counter, which was Windebank's gun. And that's the gun yeah. that she was waving around. But now he's trying to spin it that it's her own. Which is not true. Because she doesn't own a gun. Mm -hmm. This sucks. Uh, whatever. Anyways. But it's not Mr. Winterbank's blood, is it? No, that's right. It's Mr. Mason Milverton's blood from when McGilda stabbed him two months ago. It's so annoying! If they'd only accept Hurley's chemical analysis, we could prove that. But they won't, so unfortunately we can't use it as evidence to support our case. Bother. Yeah, that's right, stop talking. <laughs> D did I hear you correctly? She threw the gun out of the room? Oh, that's right. After the broker fell to the floor, she started walking over. Over where exactly? In the direction of the storeroom door, to where I was watching. Of course, I quickly retreated. And then, 
A girl dropped the gun through the peephole onto the floor at my side of the door. But why on earth would she do such a thing? I couldn't tell you. Perhaps she was hoping to distance herself from the murder weapon. Not thinking I would have picked it up. I suppose it was worried about just leaving it there, in case any more tragedies took place. So it was you, in fact, who took the third gun from the scene of the crime. Yes, it was yours truly. Well, that's a crime. Yeah, it is. A very big one. I left the clear up to my lackeys and left. Clear up? We made a bit of a mess around the counter, so Mr. Whistle Flute here told us to tidy up. Why would you do that? Why would parts. you tell us that? <laughs> well, I was paying you enough, by God! Yeah. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawnbrokery that night, was it by any chance with a second disc in your jacket pocket? Oh, you're silent now. <laughs> you're like a bull at a gate, aren't you? <laughs> Whoa! I love that. Oh my God. <laughs> what are you, you doing? Oh, toad! Excuse me. That was so funny. Gentlemen. Sure, I need to beat the shit out of him. Piss. <laughs> Huh. I'm just pretending like nothing happened. Something wrong, sunshine? Yeah. <laughs> that should be my line. You do realize you were just violently shaking Mr. Skulkin. Well, I mean, his day's a bit of a hooligan, ain't he? What was going on just now? You saw him? He grabbed me a whistle. What the places he said? <laughs> he didn't mention the third gun when he got down to the station. And why didn't you? Because we didn't know nothing about it. All the flaming people on the door. Um, sorry about that. I can be prone to losing my rag sometimes. Not hurt, are you? Bro, just strangle fucking <laughs> Milverton over there. Literally. God, why me? See the way he's looking at me? I'm telling you, this day gave me the willies. That was strange. The inspector doesn't normally get quite worked up as that. You would normally grab someone. I was about to say stab someone. <laughs> That's a crime. No, that wasn't right, Craigsy, at all. He's normally all sweetness and light, no matter what I say to him. Yes, well, I think you might be a special case, Iris. Well, anyway, that was definitely out of character. Nope. Not at all. That's pretty in character, though. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. My lord! <laughs> I'm back! Requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination. Explain yourself, officer. Eh, yeah, well, uh, I have the results of the test that was ordered earlier, my lord. Ah, uh, the blood on the accused overcoat. Yeah, they're just gonna say it was there and not say whose it is. Yeah, literally. Thank you, officer. Very well, the cross-examination is a by temporarily suspended. Which pisses me off, because if we were to literally say, uh, yeah, it's Mason Milverton's blood, then of course the prosecutor should be like, prove it. Prove that it's his. Which makes me mad, because he can straight up just be like, well, I saw blood on the coat, and they're like, oh yeah, good enough for me, and then the officer comes in, he's like, oh, well now I can confirm that there was blood on the coat, even though you didn't ask me to prove it, and now mm. we're gonna be like, how do you know it's her, like, his blood? Yeah. And they're going to be like, well, we don't, but we know that there's blood there, so uh, clearly that's... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so, like, well, our side is going to be like, oh, yeah, that's actually Mason Milverton's blood. And then he's going to be like, prove it. It's yeah, actually, but it's like... It's, it's, it's a... actually uh, freaking Windebanks. And then we'll be like, no, it's not. Right. And they'll be like, okay, prove it's not. It's like, bro, you can't win. Yeah, so it's like very hypocritical that they can just be like, well, this is a thing. Okay, where's your evidence? Uh, I don't really have any. I just said so. Oh, okay, good. Uh, well, where's your evidence? We don't yeah, have it's any? Like, come no, on. well, that's bullshit. You need evidence. <laughs> what? Like, Yeah, God, it's it's so skewed in the prosecution's favor, which, I mean, that's how all these games go. But damn, it's annoying. Mm -hmm. I know. I presume you have no objection, counsel. Um, Guess not. No, my lord. Not like you'd allow me. You already denied it the yeah, first time. Yeah, what if I said yes? Well, there you have it. The report, please, Inspector. Yes, sir. Uh, traces of human blood were found on the overcoat of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Wow. Gregson, the why are you like this? They were the result of spattering following a gunshot wound. Great, tell us if it's old or not. End of her- Okay. No, yeah, so you have to one. analyze it, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodness me. 
Like, y you guys know that this was the same overcoat used in the case two months ago, right? Stop acting like you yeah, won. you're telling me you're telling me you can have the same fucking jurors from a case two months ago, but you can't remember what people were fucking wearing in oh part, my god. like during the Oh my god. I don't now you got freaking grain and acting like you won. I know, See? it's like look at me, I'm What so did cool. I tell you? He even got a new pose. Objection. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. No. The blood on that coat is not Mr. Windebanks. Great, yeah. here we go. Now they're gonna tell me to prove it. What on earth makes you say that, Council? Bro. I'm going to snap. <laughs> because, said so. because I'm the right coat, on the protagonist. The, Fuck you. The coat originally belonged to Magnus McGilded. Just before you his coat was that. deposited in Windebanks, McGilded had fatally stabbed Mr. Mason Milverton, which sucks because we, if we look at the statements made in that uh, case two months ago, nobody said that there was blood splattered all over McGilded's coat. They just said his gloves. Mm hmm. So it would be nice if we could have taken their statements, but we can't. So the blood of that overcoat is the blood of the brickmaker from the omnibus case. Objection! Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> the dead cannot speak. Isn't that right, my Nipponese friend? Is that really your fucking excuse? Dead people Sorry? can't speak, so you're <laughs> wrong? Die. This would be like this would basically be a mistrial. This like this trial can't continue. If we no, don't know legally blood it is. cannot, because there's not enough like you don't have enough information to Yeah, to, you can't just say you know? that it's his. Yeah. Two months ago, in this very courtroom, did you not argue fervently for McGilded's innocence? Fuck you, you're gonna really Fuck bring yeah. this in? <laughs> he's gonna say we got him no. off the hook. And because no, there... he's gonna be like, this was all your fault if you wanted yeah. to, you know, if you wanted to win this trial, uh, you should have lost the other one. That like, blows. fuck you, man. Because he's gonna, he's gonna spin it now. He's gonna say, because you got him off the hook, that means if there was blood on that overcoat, he would have been guilty. And because he's innocent, that blood it can't be... Mil Milverton's. That's so that fucking That puts us in such a hard spot because then it's uh, like, can they go back and re-trial that? I don't think so. Because like, that is, court the, is the deal or? of is the deal double, double jeopardy? Once somebody's declared innocent, you can't retry them. Oh. And yet now that man is dead. You brand him a murderer. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're not like that <laughs> man, but okay. <laughs> Your conduct shatters any shred of respect you may have earned for yourself in this country. Wow, that's actually really true, Ugh. though. God. But, but that was... Uh, you were just the one who was coming at my neck for getting him <laughs> off the hook. Uh... I call it a bali disgrace. Treachery is what it is. Shut the fuck up. Mm, yeah, how did you determine whether the blood on the cut is two months old or not? Bro, you should be able to tell the difference between two-day-old blood and two-month-old. Even a stereoscope couldn't help the answer to that problem pop out. It can't be done. What do you mean? You have but, fucking eyeballs. But, uh, we use Mr. Sholmes' specially formulated chemicals. Mr. Sholmes is a detective, not a chemist. Oh my god, oh my god. Would you put such faith in a chemical formula devised by me, for example, when I'm a communications officer? I held up Prosky to starve a boy and he ran away crying. What does that have to do with That's anything? <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Sholmes <laughs> is barely more than a figment of the public's imagination. His name carries no weight in this courtroom. No weight at all. How could you say that? I agree. Victory your mouth. is sweet indeed. This proves that my testimony is the whole truth from start to finish. How do you arrive at such a conclusion, sir? As the witness said, the accused coat was spat over the blood of the victim. You don't know that! Oh my god. <laughs> the only way Mr. Graydon could possibly have known that fact is if he saw it happen. You still trust him after oh he's hid god. so many lies from this court? His credibility he is horrible. straight up changed his name, dude. Like, you can't believe anything he said. Yeah, he's lost all credibility as a witness. Right? In other words, his oh, testimony, but his testimony is solid. Is solid. <laughs> Fuck me, I guess. In a singular. Yeah, fuck the cross-examinations and objections <laughs> I did for the past hour. Literally. It was the accused who shot the victim in this case. That is the whole truth. We can't just no, base not. who the victim is, or rather who the perpetrator is in this, based off of the truth, or the quote-unquote truth of what happened in the previous case. Like, you can't do that. <sighs> Bro, I hate this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, the, the Skulker brothers are gone? Yeah, they're just fucking done, I guess. Right. <laughs> Go Lord. home. Oh, you shut the hell Lord. up. <laughs> it's been a long battle, this one, but this old war horse has something to say now, if you please. 
You shouldn't be here. Mm, You've been in too many trials. <laughs> As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. Ready, men? All for one now. All for sir. one. Sir! Guilty, guilty, guilty. 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 Fuck. <laughs> guilty. 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 Fuck all of you. You're all fucking brainwashed. And that dude, the fucking old man, has a concussion <laughs> or some shit because he keeps slamming his goddamn head on the table. <laughs> well, I so you there. shouldn't even be able to vote. <laughs> I'll trust fair, you. I don't trust you as far as I can throw you, bro. <laughs> reached a unanimous verdict. I win. Die. Let me choke, on, choke that. on that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally insane. The defense has consistently failed to unpick this witness's testimony. I'm gonna unpick your life. As <laughs> to any attempt you may make at unpicking the juror's decision being equally successful. Ugh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't believe it after I've come so far. How is it all unraveling on me so fast? Susato, come save us. Well, looks like we'll have to figure out why it's unraveling on him so fast no. in the next episode. <laughs> Damn, things are at its peak right oh now. Damn, I'm so bro. mad. This is hot. Oh, God, Graydon sucks so much. Graydon literally is dog shit. I hate and Von him. Von Zeke's so is an much. idiot. Oh, Von Zeke's is an idiot. Graydon is stupid as fuck. The Skulkin brothers are fine. I don't like. I like them. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> they can man. they can do whatever they want. This is <laughs> Not crazy. <up> <laughs> So it looks like we'll probably be wrapping things up in either the next episode or the episode after. So I guess we'll see. God, it's so close. It's exciting. So Holy as shit. always, if you all enjoyed and want to keep the series going, show us some love and support, you know what to do. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we'll catch you all in the next in episode. In the next episode.